The Wars of the Roses were a device of an important civil war, which took place across England, with the House of York and the House of Lancaster vying for the English throne, and also political dominance across the country. During this period in medieval England, there was much scheming and treachery, as well as the many battles which became famous in the Wars of the Roses. Today we look at one of the figures who was important in the dynastic struggle, George Plantagenet, who during the wars switched sides. His death was incredibly shocking, and his execution was one which was extremely barbaric. So join us today as we look at the horrific execution of George Plantagenet, the first Duke of Clarence. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. George Plantagenet was born on the 21st of October 1449 at Dublin Castle. His father was Richard Plantagenet, the Duke of York, who was serving as a Lord Lieutenant of Ireland at the time, and his mother was Cecily Neville. Two of George's brothers would become kings of England, Edward IV and Richard III. So the family were very closely linked at the time to the monarchy, and subsequently the Wars of the Roses. George's father had challenged the Lancastrian claim to the English throne, and he himself was defeated at the Battle of Wakefield in December 1460. As a sign against the Duke of York, his head was cut off and a paper crown was placed upon it when it was displayed over Micklegate Bar in York. George's elder brother, Edmund the Earl of Rutland, would also be killed later in battle, and for their safety, George and his younger brother Richard were sent to Burgundy for their own safety and protection. George's older brother Edward, known as the Earl of March, would inherit and continue with the Yorkist claim to the English crown, and did succeed in defeating the Lancastrians at the Battle of Mortimer's Cross in February 1461, and later at the Battle of Toton. He was proclaimed king when he deposed Henry VI and took the throne. Edward, who had been victorious in battle, entered London and was crowned King Edward IV at Westminster. What this meant for George Plantagenet was that he was now the brother to the king, and Edward was very generous to him and his other siblings, creating George the title, the Duke of Clarence in 1461, and his younger brother Richard, the title, the Duke of Gloucester. Edward later married Elizabeth Woodville, and surrounded himself with the influential and powerful Earl of Warwick, who would gain the nickname Warwick the Kingmaker. George himself became close with Richard Neville the Earl of Warwick, and he wanted to marry his oldest daughter, an heir to his titles and estates, Isabel Neville. However, in defiance, Edward IV, George's brother, refused to support the marriage. Defiantly, George and Isabel travelled to Calais in 1469, where they were later married. Because of his brother's refusal to support his marriage, George began to become rather embittered with the king. He began to become closer with Warwick Kingmaker, and supported a rebellion in the north, and with this the king discovered his own brother was being treacherous against him. Because of this he lost the title, the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, which was gifted to him in his youth, and George fled to France with the Earl of Warwick, his father-in-law. Whilst being looked after by Louis XII of France, Warwick turned his support to the Lancastrian Queen, Margaret of Anjou, and allied himself with her, switching his support from York to Lancaster. Margaret was the Queen Consort of the deposed King, Henry VI. George Plantagenet also supported Margaret, switching from the House of York to the House of Lancaster in his support, which was very shocking, as Edward IV, his brother, was the King of England, and also the head of the House of York. As George was also ingrained deeply with the House of York and born into it, this was a shocking betrayal and defection. Along with the Earl of Warwick, George, the Duke of Clarence, launched an invasion of England, and George found himself fighting to reinstate the dynasty, which a few years before was his bitter enemy. He began to realise quickly that he had placed his trust in the wrong person with his father-in-law, the Earl of Warwick, and began to turn to his brother Edward to try and regain favour again. George quickly tried to return back to the Yorkist cause and become trustworthy in his brother's eyes again, and he deserted the Lancastrian effort to depose Edward, but he also deserted the Earl of Warwick. Warwick Kingmaker would later be killed by Edward's forces at the Battle of Barnet in April 1471. Edward IV later reinstated his own brother in power, making him the Great Chamberlain of England, and at this time it's clear that George and Edward had reconciled. George's younger brother Richard 
the future Richard III, wished to marry Anne Neville, the daughter of Warwick Kingmaker, but George was angry as he refused to let Richard have a share in Warwick's estates after his death. For this, he even hid Anne Neville, but later her location was discovered by Richard and the brothers agreed to a compromise. Richard would marry Anne Neville, but the Duke of Clarence George would keep the bigger share of Warwick's land. George's marriage to Isabel Neville would lead to two children who would survive, Margaret the Countess of Salisbury and also Edward the Earl of Warwick. In December 1476, Isabel George's wife died shortly after giving birth to a son Richard who also passed away. After this, George attempted a bold marriage to Mary, the heiress of Burgundy, but Edward IV yet again refused to support the match and for this, George left the court of his brother and the king in a furious rage. George's mental state following the death of his wife greatly deteriorated. He was described as being extremely paranoid and he began to believe that his wife had been poisoned by a servant who was working for her. The servant in question was later found guilty at a sham trial, made up of George's own people on the jury and was hanged for the crime. George, outraged still by his brother's refusal to support the projected marriage, began to spread rumours that Edward IV was illegitimate and that his father was just in fact an archer, with their mother having an affair. He also spread rumours that Edward's queen was illegitimate and that their marriage was basically a sham as well. Edward began to find out about these rumours and was understandably furious with rage. In order to serve a warning to his brother, he ordered the execution of one of George's household staff, a man called John Stacy, who was accused of witchcraft and was executed. George did not stop though. He appeared in Westminster and forced a priest to read a declaration of innocence about Stacy, and in Cambridgeshire, a large rebellion occurred and it was believed that George was behind this. He continued to rebel against his brother and he was accused of going too far when he hanged the servant accused of poisoning his wife. For this, Edward IV had the final say and he ordered the arrest of his own younger brother and brought him to the Tower of London on a charge of high treason. George Plantagenet, the Duke of Clarence, was kept at the Tower for a few months before Edward thought about what to do. The King was hesitant to order George's execution at the start. Eventually, Edward IV had enough and put his own brother on trial for treason against him and even though George was not present, Edward prosecuted his own brother. He demanded that Parliament pass an act of attainder in which his brother was declared guilty of unnatural and loathly treasons. George was guilty and was sentenced to death for treason, however his execution was one of the most shocking in English history. Whilst being held in the most secure building across the land, the Tower of London, George Plantagenet, brother to the King, was executed in private. Official records from the time say how he was subject to a private execution in the Bowyer Tower, part of the notorious fortress. Tradition from this time and during the later Tudor period was that those of royalty and extremely high class were executed in private within the walls of the Tower of London, usually by beheading. However, a rather brutal rumour emerged at the time about the death of George Plantagenet. Inside the Bowyer Tower, it's believed that George was executed in horrific fashion, being privately executed not by a swordsman or axeman, but by something much more brutal and distressing. In order to stamp his authority on his brother, Edward IV had ordered that his brother was drowned in a butt or a barrel of Malmsey wine. So George would have been lowered and held in a barrel full of wine, and it's believed by some that this is because he knew of Edward's pre-contract of marriage to another lady. The drowning in wine is a horrific and bloody way to go and would have induced much suffering and horror for George than a simpler and quicker beheading would have. George Plantagenet has gone down in the canon of English history as a turncoat who caused no end of problems for his brother Edward at a time in which the monarchy was incredibly unstable. The Wars of the Roses and the instability which came with it plagued the country and George's execution was a symbol of how far King Edward IV would go to stamp his authority on his realm. Interestingly, George's own daughter Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury, would also meet her end inside the Tower of London, with the horrendous and botched execution in which she refused to put her head on the block. 
A portrait of Margaret shows her with a bracelet which has a barrel on it, which could symbolise her affinity with her father's fate. But George Plantagenet's grisly end in a barrel of Malmsey wine was a horrific way to go, that shows the suffering his brother wanted him to experience, for the pain and treachery he had put him through. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.